from arguing about Jewish sport or sport and Jews. Anyway, this is about fencing, and I will read as well as Chaim. It will be easier for me. So the roots of modern fencing stem from the duel, a ritual which was exclusively kept for the European aristocracy. Jews were attracted to duel because it was a symbol of a high social status. As you can see here, the movements, you will see that fencing, modern fencing, is quite similar. This is modern fencing. Fencing inherited the prestige of the duel. Since fencing became a modern sport, it attracted many Jews. And because of it, it was regarded as Jewish sport. Indeed, the connection between Jews and fencing is unparalleled to any other sport. At the Paris Olympic Games, 1900, a Jewish fencer from Austria named Siegfried Flesch won a bronze medal. This medal was the first of 90 medals, of which 47 gold medals, in which Jews won for the countries in the Olympic Games in the 20th century. This number is the highest among all sports played by Jews. The ex excellence of Jews in fencing was an outstanding phenomenon and should be seen as part of the changes Chaim, that occurred in the Jewish so uh, society in the Central Europe in the 19th and the, uh, century. During this period, the standard of living of Jews rose and they adopted bourgeois lifestyle. This process has led to social and cultural changes within the Jewish community. The leaders of Jewish community faced the rejection of emancipation and the rising of anti-Semitism. In response to these transformations, various Jewish identities, identities were created, as Chaim just told us. One of the identities the Jews adopted was integ integrating into the local majority. Another Jewish identity reflected the rise of Zionism. The Zionism ethos gave the body culture and a central place in, the, in its ideology. The national consci consciousness uh, and the recognition that the nation's physical training was part of the process of shaping it from the philosophy of Max Nordo, the father of the term Muskel Judentum. At the Second Zionist Congress held in Basel 1898, uh, many Jews echoed his call and joined the sports associations. Max Nordo attributed great importance to combat sports especially fencing, he probably meant the duel, as an instrument of, for improving the image of Jews in the society. The, the practice in fencing stemmed from reasons that went beyond framework of leisure time. Excellence in areas that were considered elitist symbols were an effective social tool. Those who tried to emphasize Jewish identity through fencing belonged to Zionist clubs. Others used fencing as a, a, an integrating tool to the general society. They chose to register to general fencing clubs as an expression of their aspiration to climb on the social ladder. Their achievements in fencing were particularly high. The excellence of Jewish fencer crossed geographi geographical and national borders. The brothers Paul and Henry Ansbach, Gaston Salmon and Jacques Ox of Belgium were among the most prominent athletes in the country at the beginning of the 20th century. This is Paul Ansbach. He participated, participated in four Olympic Games and served as head of Belgium Olympic Committee and president of the International Fencing Federation. In France, the Olympic medalist Yves Dreyfus, Alexander Lippmann, and Claude Netter. In Great Britain, one of the most pre prominent British champions of all times was Ellen Jay. Ellen and Ivan Osier were the most successful fencers in Denmark. In Germany, the half-Jewish fencer, uh, Helena Meyer, was in the 20s and uh, the 30s of the last century, one of the most successful and known sport figures in the world. This is Helena Meyer. Meyer won two Olympic medals. She won four medals in world championships and three, uh, three of them gold. Mai was caught in the center of international controversy regarding the boycott of the Berlin Games in 1936. It was, it's worth noting that the three winners of the 1936 Games Berlin were a Jewish 
from Jewish ancestry. We can see here Ilona Elek from Hungary, first one. Elena Meyer of Germany, Ellen Müller Price from Austria. All researchers agree that the connection between Jews and fencing in Hungary was an exceptional phenomenon in the sports world. Most Hungary celebrated fencers were Jews, among them Shandor Gombos, Janos Gerey, Dejo Foltz, Zoltan Schenker, Jeno Fuchs, Andre Kabos. He won gold medal in the 1936 Olympic Games. We can see here some of the figures, some of the fencers, the champions, and their achievements in Olympic Games. About him, we as Jews, we always adopt others who are not for sure Jew. I'm not sure. I found only in one place a, a remark that uh, Gerevich was Gurevich actually, which is Ben Hur in Hebrew. You can translate it, but I'm not sure about it, so I have to be frank about it. Ilona Elek, she won the 36 Olympics. Andre Kabosch won the Berlin Games. And of course Attila Petschauer. The most fa famous fencer in Hungary was Attila Petschauer. Petschauer, who won three Olympic medals and seven World Championships medals, was named D'Artagnan, the name of the famous musketeer. His character inspired filmmaker, Jewish Hungarian Isteban Sabo, amateur fencing himself. The film Sunshine tells the story of Petro's life and his tragic, tragic death. This is the film. I think in 1990, 91, 92. 99. 90, 99. 99? Are you sure? Not before? Uh, I will look for it and then. Uh, yeah, uh, okay, the sorry. Petro was sent in 1943 by the Nazis to a labor camp in Ukraine. To his delight, he discovered that the camp commandant was a Hungarian officer whom he nurtured and trained when he was a member of the Hungarian team in fencing. Pecho was astonished when this officer ordered the camp guard to abuse him. Pecho was stripped of his clothes and forced to climb a tree. Then they ordered him to crawl on, uh, on his knees and squeak like a rooster. And at last the guards tied him to a tree and spilled frozen water over him. It was a cold winter night and Petrova froze to death in no time. The golden age of the Jewish uh, fencing champions from Hungary passed after the Holocaust, but 10 medals won by Olympic fencers uh, of Jewish descent in the period between London Games 48 and Montreal Games 76 are a reminder of the deep ties between Hungarian Jews and fencing. Soviet Union banned the practice of fencing until the mid-50s of the 20th century. Until then, it was considered a bourgeois sport. With the Khrushchev rise to power, I think 53, uh, the state began to promote all sports, including fencing. Fencing gave the Jews, as a minority, a possibility to climb up the social ladder and improve their economic situation. Jews flocked to fencing, and some reached the national team. The most successful were David Tischler, Mark Rakita, Jakob Rilski, Mark Midler, Gregory Kris, Maria Mazina, Josef Vitebski, Eduard Vinokoro. The bond between Jews and fencing was unrevealed in the desolation of the Soviet Union. Among the prominent names in the post-Soviet era were Jewish fencer Vadim Butzait, Sergei Sharikov, and Dmitry Rijin. They all were in the last Maccabi or two Maccabi years ago. Uh, with the dismantling of the Soviet Union, Jewish Fencers and coaches emigrated to the United States. They joined the immigrants and their descendants who had arrived to in previous waves of immigration. The connection between Jews and fencing was renewed and even strengthened in the new world. The U.S. team at various times included many Jews, Axel Ate, Albert, Albert Axelrod, Cliff Bayer, Emily Jacobson, Tamir Bloom, Dan Kellner, and John Jonkin. 
The immigration wave in the 90s brought many coaches and fences to Israel, and the immigrants enriched the Israeli fencing. The first fences in Palestine arrived in the 20s. In the fifth Aliyah arrived more fences from Austria, Germany, and Hungary. We can see here national team, in, I think it's in the fifth, in the third Maccabiya in the in 50 or in 53, I'm not sure, the fourth one. They settled down in Haifa, Jerusalem, and Tel Aviv, established new fencing clubs. In the 60s, Academy of Fencing was founded in Galilee, and many instructors were trained there. In the 80s, Israeli fencer began to reach the top in the international arena. Among the best known are Nili Drori, Tzchak Hatuel, Shlomi Yal, Tomer Or, Yoav Offenberg, Noah Mills, Ayelet Ochayon, and Yuval Freulich. Tomer Or, who you saw before, the first, uh, 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 the first picture uh, was the first Israeli world champion under 20. Sport historians wonder why Jews at all times choose fencing more than any other sport. They noted four main reasons. I'm sorry, but it's in Hebrew, but I will read it. The Jews, more than any other ethnic minority, had the means to send their children to fencing. Fencing or oh, the image had the image of intelligent sport. The fencers are not divided according to physical categories. As long as a fencer is intelligent, he has the chance to be successful. In the 20s, Jews' access to high education was limited due to the law of numerous clauses. Fencing as a prestige and intelligent sport attracted young Jewish people from middle class who could not become lawyers, doctors, or engineers. Fencing provided a sense of control as a compensation for social uh, disrespect. Fencing was a tool uh, for social integration and for Jewish uprightness. Today, at the beginning of the third millennium, fencing is no longer identified with Jews. Still, the percentage of successful Jewish fencers and coaches is higher than the percentage among the population in many countries. That's it.